and we are back and we're jumping right into our third and final conversation for this morning and we are now going to be speaking about Expedia's uh, revi sorry, Revive and Relief program. And here to discuss that with us are Manor Lario, who is Expedia Market Manager for Belize and the Bay Islands of Honduras, as well as Mauricio Naranjo, who is a market associate for Belize and the Bay Islands of Honduras representing Expedia. So good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Gavin. Uh, good morning, Marlene. All right. And thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, guys. So, Revive and Relieve, can you tell us a little bit about what this program is all about? Definitely. I think, um, let me give you a quick synopsis of what um, Expedia Group is doing as one of the largest travel agencies. Uh, we're actually committing $275 million to help partners rebound uh, from the impact of COVID-19 and to have and help them to have a, a better recovery period. Yeah. Um, and of course, this comprises of a global initiative to support industry uh, relief. And we're actually doing this in a phase approach mm -hmm. where we're going to be doing um, restoring partners. We're also going to be helping to restore destinations. Um, and we're also going to be helping restoring the industry. So those are uh, basically the, the three layer approach yeah. that we were having for this relief program. Now, Minor, this is really interesting because I think uh, the devastating and immediate effects that COVID-19 had on the, the tourism sector is one that I, I think people are still grappling with. And we, we don't really know what recovery will look like or how long it will take. Um, Expedia is a global company. It works, um, and I'm sure all of your partners across the world are, are feeling the effects. Uh, how did they decide um, how the, the relief funds will be administered, who becomes priority, and, and how people access? That's a very good um, question, Marlene. And let me just start by saying that restoring travel will take an unprecedented level of partnership between uh, the public and the private sector. And one of the first things that we did through the pandemic, um, and we're a data-driven company, uh, was to seek new data. Of course, we had data from previous uh, very good years uh, for us to help us do forecasting. Uh, but unfortunately, during a pandemic, I think um, for us, data became even more important. Uh, and so one of the first things that we, we did was we launched a campaign called We're Next, and it mm -hmm. was actually targeting those stay-at-home travelers and to sort of pick the mind of the consumer to know where they were going. Uh, that would help us a lot in, in going back to your question, where travel will resume faster because we know that it's not a one-size-fit-all option for yeah. recovery. There's going to be different green shoots uh, in different markets during different periods. And we just want to ensure that we're there to help and support the destinations, the industry, and the stakeholders uh, uh, whenever that happens. Yeah. And um, perhaps you could um, just shed a little bit more light about, uh, or, or at least um, on what you mean um, when you make the distinction between industry, between partners, and between destinations, you know, um, or those three that you mentioned just now, you could just shed a bit more light on what you mean um, in, and what the differences between those are. Definitely. So one of the first things in terms of um, getting uh, everyone ready for travel is actually restoring the destination. So one of the things that we did was um, we, uh, one, implementing complementary and educational um, sources for the workforce to recover. So we actually launched an uh, Expedia Academy um, online where a lot of the four low uh, industry stakeholders and small property owners can join to build capacity. You know, this is a time when you need to become more competitive. You need to be cutting edge in technology. You need to understand uh, partnerships both online and what we did as of the ending of June we actually launched um, like I mentioned before uh, Expedia Academy 
which is a partnership with LinkedIn, so that all these small, medium-sized uh, hotel uh, and hoteliers can actually build capacity within their team. That's one of the things that we're doing to restore the industry. Yeah. We're also restoring the cons customer's confidence with new health and safety features and flexible booking options. So we actually launched a health and safety protocol as early as April, and we've been lobbying for a lot of properties to tell us what their new uh, health and safety protocols are. And through our filters and searches, you could actually filter through properties that are having an enhanced safety and cleaning protocols. So I think that also helps to build consumer confidence moving forward. And, and we understand that, you know, that's going to help uh, restore the industry. Now, when we're talking in terms of the destination, we're actually providing a 25 million advertising fund. And yeah. as a matter of fact, we met with the BTP yesterday to talk a little bit about that. And this is to help to reignite demand through market awareness yeah. um, and advertising funds for the destination itself. Yeah. Um, we understand also that it's going to be a long uh, road to the to recovery and yeah. this recovery program is just the first step in a in our long road to rebuild a more resilient and inclusive and of course sustainable global travel uh, ecosystem which for us it's uh, very important it's and i'm gonna yeah. uh, and the last one i'm gonna leave uh -huh. mauricio to talk a little bit about what we're doing for the actual hotels yeah uh, home release. and actually this program launches today Okay. Uh, so you guys are breaking the news about um, speed up launching the revive and relief program, which is available as of today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mauricio. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, good morning. And I'm going to talk about the main uh, features of this uh, program, revive and relief, which, uh, by the way, um, it was already uh, released here in Costa Rica. Um, and I say here because I am in, in, in Costa Rica. And like a month ago, it was it was released here, and it was very successful. Um, our partners were very very happy to us. They feel that, that we are uh, a very supportive uh, company in this uh, specific uh, period, this specific time that is this this crisis. Yeah. So, uh, Ma uh, Minor mentioned, yeah, we are we're very. Uh, proud that see our company is committed to uh, invest $250 million to help uh, our independent partners and in small chains rebuild their business, uh, attract highly by guests and optimize cash flow. So uh, we are reinvesting 25% of the 2019 compensation we earn from, from booking at participating partners' properties into marketing credits. Yeah. For use uh, with Expedia Group, uh, this uh, marketing program is called Accelerator. And also to provide additional financial relief, we are uh, reducing compensation for bookings made within the three-month period, uh, regardless of the actual pay date. And as well, we are uh, extending payment terms for, for hotel collect bookings to 90 days. This is an extension. Uh, payment for three months. Mm -hmm. As well, we're using our marketing power, uh, power to help our partners engage the highest value travelers yeah. shopping in our marketplace with special promotions and refundable package rates. Yeah. Uh, the marketing funds and financial relief will become available to our partners based on the recovery signals of their market specifically positive demand trends. Yeah. So as uh, Costa Rica it was showing, you know, uh, positive demand trends, uh, like a month ago, it was released here. Mm -hmm. And now is the time for belief. And this is going to be, um, you know, launched in every country, but we will be, uh, you know, launching the program uh, when we see these signals of positive, positive trends. So, this so we're is very happy to to release it yeah. in Berlin. Sorry? So I was saying uh, that that's an interesting point because um, I think that's mm. a, a critical area to look at. The $250 million, um, in marketing credit, uh, um, it, it's a really interesting model that you guys have put together. So basically you're taking part of the profit from last year 
um, and you are translating it into um, what you call a marketing credit, it allows people to kind of boost their own uh, properties, uh, the destinations um, in marketing awareness through Expedia, if, if that's how I understand it so far. So I wanted to tap into your experience so far, Mauricio, in, in what you've seen in Costa Rica, because we're about to reopen our airport, um, and, and I know that everyone's trying to come up with innovative ways to remind everybody uh, of all the beauty that we have to offer here. Um, what's, what's been some mm -hmm. of the success that you spoke of in, in Costa Rica so far? Okay, um, as you may uh, know, uh, we have no, uh, the airport is not open yet. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but the success is for, you know, especially for, for the future. As of uh, October, November uh, mm -hmm. this year, uh, Costa Rica was, is showing uh, an important growth, a new reservations on Expedia site mm -hmm. and, and for the future, for next year. So um, there's a lot of expectation of the customers that this is going to end, you know, kind of uh, soon. Uh, I, I know this is something we don't know. Uh, nobody knows when it's going to end, but there's a, an expectation that this is going to end uh, kind of, you know, in the, in the next few months. Mm -hmm. So the, the people is, is making reservations already. For, for Costa Rica and uh, these uh, these programs, the the credit of the accelerator program has uh, helped our partners to get more reservations for you know for, especially for next year, starting on, on January. Yeah. That uh, is when when the people is thinking that it this is going to be over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you think that? Um, I don't know if maybe if, uh, what you expect or maybe you've already um, experienced it or heard from um, some of your partners is whether or not there's a high level of let, let's say enthusiasm or optimism about a program like this because as we know um, you know the pandemic is not over a lot of people might be concerned or they say that well are people even going to want to travel are people going to want to invest this type of money so do you, do you find that there's optimism within the industry and among your partners? Um, yeah, let me take that one, Gavin. So I've been talking, um, as you may or may not know, I have daily calls with between 10 to 12 different partners uh, on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, and when I've mentioned the program uh, to them briefly, of course, because I, I didn't have a start date because we needed the right travel signals to be able to launch it for Belize. I think one of the things that um, I want to just make very clear is that even though we're launching the program now, it doesn't mean people are going to book for next week or for this weekend. You know, this program is going to help our, uh, you know, our last quarter of the year, uh, similar to what uh, some of the results that we signed in Costa Rica in terms of uh, increased number of bookings. Yeah. Um, and our hope is that a lot of partners are very enthusiastic about it um, to know that, you know, we're with them, not just in the good times, but also in the uh, the, the most difficult and challenging times like we're living today and a lot of them are one very uh, appreciative of you know just hearing what we have to say sharing data of what we're seeing in terms of market trends yeah and like director of tourism said yesterday um in an in a interview with um with, with another um tv station she said uh, travel at the moment is uh, is limited to none um, and unfortunately, they, a lot of companies and a lot of hotels, especially small and medium hotels, lack that data to be able to plan for the future, you know, because right now a lot of them are planning, am I going to be open? How am I going to open? Will it be beneficial and will it be a revenue investment to open August 15? So all those questions and by us giving uh, them a call and sharing some of the data yeah. Uh, it helps them in planning, you know, because at some point you have to look at the future and say that, um, like I mentioned initially, it's going to be a long road to recovery, yeah. but you have to look at it and, and, and start taking that walk. What am I doing today to be ready and, and uh, whenever travel comes back? Or am I just going to sit back and wait for 
um, others to just pass by. You know, I think um, while it, it is a national crisis, uh, um, you know, some people are planning for the future. And again, this program is for that, you know. Yeah. Minor. It's going to work for three months, uh, yeah. so it will give us enough data to, to plan ahead. Go ahead. I, I really want to tap into that data question because I think it is interesting. I couldn't imagine um, owning a property and trying to plan for the future because what people may search for for now to the end of 2020 may be different in 2021 and completely different from all my years of experience has taught me. What is the data saying so far in terms of what people are searching for? Are they looking for cost? Are they looking for safety protocols? What seems to be at least the current trend? Definitely. So some of the things that we've seen uh, in terms of the destination for police is that the booking window has gotten so much longer. And of course, that's definitely understandable. You know, you didn't know if the airport was going to be open, if yeah. the airport in my source destination will be open. So there were a lot of uncertainties. Okay. And little by little, those uncertainties will be um, resolved. And again, I mentioned it's going to be a long road to recovery, uh, but you have to be ready for when re when travel returns. And so uh, we've actually launched, um, uh, in our partner central, we've actually made available to every property that is listed with Expedia these very same travel trends throughout okay. the local market insight. So every property that's listed with Expedia under their analytics tool is actually looking at proprietary data, yeah. telling you how much people are searching for police week over week, because we understand that there's nothing we could compare to this to 2019 or 2018. Yeah. So we're actually giving them the tools to be able to analyze this on a week by week basis and see how much people are searching for police and what market and when they're booking. Nice. So that's going to give them, uh, again, some foresight into start getting prepared and see uh, and, and have that foreshadow to be able to plan ahead, which nice. for us is very important. Nice. And the accelerator program, uh, Mauricio, um, how, how do people, I mean, the insight is going to be helpful in having properties know where they want to use that credit, I imagine? Correct. <clears throat> this is why the, this uh, series of reports um, are important so our partners can see when uh, the demand is high and when it's low. Yeah. So this uh, is an intelligence uh, uh, report they can use to you know, take decisions on when will be most beneficial. To, to use that accelerator credit. Is it equal across the board, the amount of credit that uh, the different properties get, or, it's, or is it based on the revenue that they brought in? It's from the revenue they brought it to Expedia in okay. 2019. Yeah. Uh, 25% uh, of the, they have uh, made Expedia earn in 2019. Okay. And uh, the least amount will be uh, $200. And the top amount will be one hundred thousand dollars per property. Now, how does how does it work? I mean, for people who haven't looked into using um, these types of marketing tools, how will it help them um, in being able to get more bookings? The accelerator program is um, it's a program that helps um, the hotel to to be in the top listing. Um, what we have seen in our uh, intelligence um, report uh, is that like the 75% of, of the traffic in our brand site uh, are coming from the first 25 positions. Uh, so uh, these positions is where every hotel want to be. Yeah. So uh, the accelerator will make that the hotel come to this top position. Yeah. So they can uh, be more be more visible for lazy visible, people yeah. who don't want to go past page one, yeah. right? <laughs> 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 but um, and and that brings me to to the other part because it's also looking um, at what you're going to be doing for your customers 
Um, I mean, you, you, you serve two people. You serve the people who list with you, but you also serve the people who choose to go to an Expedia to try to get their bookings done. What type of safety measures, given just the, the radically changing um, times that we're in, are, are in place? Um, let me. Uh, Minor, you help me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, one of the things that we did early on was actually to partner with um, health organizations yeah. to revise um, one of the, some of the best practices. And so we quickly created a quick questionnaire. Um, under the property details, and it's yeah. actually a new amenity that features right above the price. So just before you make a booking, you will be able to see what measures the hotel is or isn't doing. Additional to that, we actually included that filter in our search tool. Right. So people that only want to book with uh, a property that has the healthy and safety protocol, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be an option for them to only search properties that have an enhanced cleaning protocol. In terms of creating the protocol, um, we've left that to different government entities, but what we've created is sort of like that questionnaire for properties to be able to highlight what they are doing if they're doing uh, a safety and healthy protocol. In terms of the gold standard um, that Belize has launched, one of the things that we've recommended is through our messaging tool to automate that upon a booking. So a lot of properties that are planning to open are actually attaching the gold standard and, and, and the safety protocols to come to Belize upon booking. So if you guys would do a booking for any property in Belize that actually is planning to open, you will see that you upon booking, you will get an automated message informing you right away uh, that these are the things you got to do, right? Yeah. So uh, that, that's going to be very helpful, one, for the properties. And we're also uh, still considering um, enlarging our flex cancellation policy, which actually allows travelers to, uh, to cancel but rebook with the same property, which I think serves um, both our end consumer in terms yes. of travelers and also our partners, because you have to be able to understand that if my airport is closed and I'm not able to travel, I want to be able to cancel, but at the same time safeguarding that reservation for that traveler to be able to rebook at a later date. So we actually launched that tool in April as well. Um, and so we saw a lot of that, which um, helped a lot with the cancellations. Yeah, and I, and I would imagine that um, Expedia is also, um, for, for the customers who use the service, is going to keep them updated um, as to whatever new um, developments might be on the ground, because they might make a booking today, and then next week there might be something, um, you know, whether it's the airport or whether there's a new safety measure that people have to be aware of. Um, so that they're aware of all the information they need relation, in relation to their booking. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I, I've also read that you are not just offering your marketing credit, um, you're also looking at just the tough financial times um, that the uh, different properties may be faced with and uh, looking at flexibility in terms of their own payments. Definitely, I think, uh, and that comes in two tiers. And yeah. just so you know, Expedia actually has a two uh, two different kind of contracts. One where Expedia collects um, and then pays the partner, mm -hmm. and then the other uh, tier would be when the property collects from the customer and then pays the commission. So we're actually going to be reducing the commission for a three-month grace period starting today, right through to November. Yeah. Um, and what we're going to be doing is, depending on the commission you're paying Expedia, we're going to lower your commission. If you join this program, the Revive and Relief program, mm -hmm. you will be able to reduce your commission by a 10% of what you're paying. Yeah. Um, so that's one. Again, uh, and the idea behind that is to build cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, you know what they say in Belize, one, one full basket, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the other one is actually when the property collects any bookings from now until November 7th, we're going to be able to give them a three month grace period. So they will have a three month grace period to make payments in addition to that. Yeah. So, um, and I think these recommendations uh, are, are a 360 approach where we understand that 
we have to help the partners, we have to help the destination, and we also have to help the stakeholders in terms of the staff at, at, at the properties. Yeah. And with that in mind, during the pandemic, we actually conducted 257 roundtable discussions. And I'm also proud to say that they, uh, one of those roundtable discussions, we included uh, independent property owners in those um, table discussions from Belize. So, um, you know, these recommendations weren't something that we did on a silo. Mm -hmm. It was a very extensive consultation process for us to be able to put together this very holistic program that, you know, will help and uh, with, with the assistance that they really require during this time. And again, um, and, and I'm not going to get tired of saying it's going to be a long road to recovery. Yeah. Um, but again, Expedia is, is there every step of the way, uh, both in good times and in bad times. I think even more so now in, in the bad times. You know, I could tell you since March uh, to now, uh, my workload has probably increased uh, and I've been working a little bit over time. Mm -hmm. um, but we understand that a lot more partners, a lot more stakeholders have a lot more questions yeah. uh, than when business was business as usual. Well, I mean, I think the tourism sector has always been a bit more advanced than the rest of us. I'm speaking locally in, in recognizing um, the benefits of digital marketing, but now it's even more important. And that, that leads me, um, for my final question at least, uh, Mauricio, I think it, when you talk about being able to have the credit, the accelerator mm -hmm. credit, so I know I can get myself listed, and you're also um, going to offer the... Uh, data as to what people are searching for and how that can help. Is there any other guidance that will be offered so people can really make the best decisions with the credits that they do get? Is there any other what? I'm sorry? Guidance. Oh. Advice, yeah. Yeah, the, the, this, this is very important. It's the guidance that we, the market managers, see yeah. to our partners. Yeah, we are um, at, uh, Accessing them, uh, I would say, like uh, twice a month. Mm -hmm. We are uh, calling them to give them our advices to see how is everything going on. So this is this is the most important thing: the uh, approach they have with our uh, with our partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, gentlemen, as you said, today is the official launch date. So if I'm a property, I'm listed with Expedia. Do I just go to the website and sign up and, it, and, it, and I can be able to follow through from there? Yeah, well, um, what you would do is um, easy steps to log into Partner Central. In uh -huh. the home section, you will see um, there are up new opportunities for your market. You will click on it and it will take you directly to where the Revive and Relief program has actually launched now and it's available to you. And there's going to be a button there that says join along with all the same information that we've talked about today. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, I also want to invite uh, every property owner who is interested in learning uh, in more detail about this program. And we're actually going to be having a short 20 minute webinar on Thursday mm -hmm. called A Path to Recovery. Mm -hmm. And it's actually going to be conducted by uh, Karen Spivy who is the Director of Market Management uh, globally. Um, so you'll be logging on to a global webinar where uh, US properties will be logging to. And she's going to be talking about the insights to prepare for bubble rebound, uh, strategies to capture demand when demand returns, and ways to ensure that your property's visibility um, attracts uh, the travelers moving forward. So I think um, some of the same things that you're asking because again we understand that we do have a lot of data and we're seeing a lot of trends uh, we also want to share these best practices and yeah. trends with our uh, Expedia properties so that they can also have a faster recovery period uh, whenever that is so that's, so that's looking very important for us so you're looking at both short-term and long-term interests of their partners exactly well, thank you very much. We hope that uh, everyone decides to participate in the program. But thank you for allowing or uh, telling us all about how it's going to work. Perfect. Best thank of you. luck. Thank you.